I don't know. Anyway, dude, no one understands Book of the New Sun. I'm just interested because it takes place in a theater. I wish I had written this book. <laughs> that one. I'm sorry, Rachel, but I don't like her last name. May TBR. I cannot believe it's May already. What the heck? Hey, well, my TBR is um blessedly light in May, so yay for that. <laughs> uh, without further ado, here are the books that I'm reading in May. The Year of Gaiman continues with Coraline. I kind of, I, I scheduled my Year of Gaiman on, in publishing order, which I think I've mentioned, but anyway. So I'm kind of sad that Coraline is now instead of like Halloween time. But I think, no, Graveyard Book is also not in October. I think one of the short story collections is in October. I don't know. Anyway, Coraline. Technically Coraline takes place in spring. So I guess now is a good a time as any to read Coraline. I love Coraline. I love the edition illustrated by Chris Riddle or Crid uh, Riddell. I'm actually not sure how he pronounces it. If you've never read Coraline, it's a creepy good time. It is quite scary. So if you're thinking of this for your children, I'd recommend reading it before you let your children read it because it is shockingly dark for a children's book. I find it quite creepy and I'm an adult. I love it. I think it's really good, <laughs> but it is quite creepy. And it is also quite short. So I said my TBR this month is short. Not only is my TBR short, but like the books on it aren't super long either. So with one notable exception. So maybe it's just as well that the rest of my TBR is light. So anyway, uh, Coraline. Next up, we are concluding the Book of the New Sun read along on my uh, Patreon with Earth of the New Sun. I didn't know, I knew that this was like, kind of like tacked on, but I learned since from one of my patrons that the reason this was tacked on was because the publishers, um, Gene Wolfe's publishers were like, dude, no one understands Book of the New Sun. You need to write a fifth book explaining yourself. So he wrote Earth of the New Sun, grudgingly, is what is my understanding of kind of what happened with that. So I'm interested slash anxious about reading this because the uh, this wasn't really the author wanting to, to write this or to explain this. So I'm a little worried about how it's gonna go because um, that doesn't, it's not a pretty, it's not a particularly fortuitous kind of like beginning or um, genesis for this, but I am, I, I, <laughs> I have to admit to being quite baffled by parts of Book of the New Sun. So if Earth can shed some light, I welcome it because I fully admit to being possibly too dumb for Book of the New Sun, though I am enjoying Book of the New Sun. So yeah, Earth hopefully will um, explain some things and not be too bad. Hopefully Gene um, didn't completely um, <laughs> kind of like phone it in, but we'll see. I'm, I'm, intrigued at the very least. Next is the book that both my patrons are reading as our buddy read, um, like book club discussion book for us. This is also the book that they voted on for me to read and vlog for them. So it's a twofer. And that is a reread for me, which is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. It's been quite a few years since I read this, but I really, really loved this the first time that I read it. And um, I always love telling people about the blurb on the, this is the international edition. And on this edition, the blurb on the back is, I wish I had written this book. <laughs> so I don't really think you can get a much better blurb than that. This was such an immersive experience for me the first time I read it. The first time I read it, when I started reading it, I was like, okay, this is interesting, I guess, this is fine. And then the like quintessentially Lainey Taylor-ish thing where suddenly the story that you thought this was is not it at all and it's a different story now. From that point on, I was like glued to the book, could not put it down. I was like reading it with my whole body. I, I was exhausted at the end. So I'm guessing the experience won't be quite that the second time because part of that was not knowing where that where it'd go and, and what would happen and being you know anxious about it. So I do know where it goes now. So I, I don't think it'll be quite as like gripping but I am looking forward to rereading it and very grateful to my patrons for uh, letting me have this twofer. Next up is the next book in the Witcher read along and that is Time of Contempt by Andrzej Sapkowski. And the live show chat for this will be on chapter three podcast on the last Tuesday of the month. Um, the date is going to be the 30th, I think. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to reading this and I'm looking forward to chatting about it with Bethany on Chat With Me Podcast. Uh, next up are my two Book of the Month Club books. First is my book of the month and I chose The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. I have actually started reading this already and I'm not really liking it, but I also am quite confused by it. I think I need to start it over again. I think I missed something in the beginning because I... <laughs> Either it's not well written or I, something about it has me lost right now. So I'm going to start over and, and see if that helps because right now I'm kind of like, huh? But um, anyway, it's a thriller mystery, isolated close circle mystery, I believe, or at the very least, it's a mystery. Seven hours in the past, seven days in the present, seven survivors remaining, who would you save? Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Book of the month, you know. We'll see. I'm actually much more excited about the add-on that I chose. I was actually considering skipping my box. Um, and then I saw this was available as an add-on and I was like, okay, well, I want that. So I'll get 
like one of the actual books of the month, that one, so that I can get this add on, which is The House is on Fire by Rachel Beanland. What a terrible name. I'm sorry, Rachel, but I don't like her last name. Hey, what was this about? It's about a theater, I think. Blah, 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 blah. When the theater goes up in flames in the middle of the performance, Sally, Cecily, Jack, and Gilbert make a series of split second decisions that will not only affect their own lives, but those of countless others. And in the days following the fire, the paths of these four will become forever intertwined. Well, there's more. How much more could there be? Part moral thriller, part transporting historical drama, The House is on Fire offers proof that sometimes in the midst of great tragedy, we're offered our most precious and fleeting chances at redemption. I'm just interested because it takes place in a theater and there's a fire and it's got like a thriller component. I don't know how good it's gonna be, but it intrigues. I also quite like the cover. So hopefully this will go well. Next up is the book that I was like, Okay, one of these books is super long, so thank goodness the rest are short. And that is Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. The Red Rising read-along continues. I'm very excited to reread Iron Gold, although it is it is massive, not as massive as Dark Age. Dark Age is even longer. But Iron Gold is not short. <laughs> uh, the live show for this, I believe, will be on Alex's channel um, towards the end of the month. Date is still TVD, I believe, as of filming this right now. But yeah, the new books I like so much better than the originals, and I love the originals, so that should tell you something. I'm so excited to read this for the third time, and of course I'm excited to chat about it with Alex and Angela. It has been such a blast reading these books with them, so I hope you'll join us for the chat, and there will be another giveaway for, like, uh, items more related to this book. So come join us for the live chat so you can enter that giveaway, and yeah. And last but not least, the reason that I'm wearing this lovely sweatshirt is uh, Mara is finally embarking for the second time on her first law journey with me. So we are reading The Blade Itself. Yes, this will be my sixth time, seventh, sixth, sixth time reading it. And I'm very excited to read it. Very excited to read it with Mara. Very excited to chat about it with Mara. And yeah, it's about time I haven't been in the world of first law for you know, a few minutes. <laughs> I mean, we finished Wisdom of Crowds last November, I think, for a chapter three podcast read along. And I haven't touched first law since then. So I'm having withdrawals. It's been like five months. Ha, huh, your girl needs some first law. So as we know, I am happiest when reading first law. So I will be at my happiest in May, or at least starting in May. So Hooray! And those are all the books that I will be for sure reading in May. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts about those books. If you're joining us for any of the various read-alongs, if you hate all these books, if you love all these books, if you've never heard of these books, if whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe to my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.